Hello, Coven. Uh, this is Josh, and I'm back to talk about Episode 5, Burn Witch Burn, which uh, starts off with our uh, flashback to uh, Kathy Bates, Madame LaLaurie, and her uh, House of Horrors, I guess would be the best way to put it. I absolutely love these flashbacks, and I love Kat Kathy Bates' performance here. I, I think it's just she's just fantastic. And every time we get a flashback from her, it just gets gruesome, more gruesome, and just more horrific. And her flashbacks define horror. And here we flashback, and she is bringing her eldest, eldest daughter's suitor, I guess, through her chamber of horrors, having him stick his hand in the bowls trying to, to guess what's in there. And the first one is her slave's eyes. Just in a in a pool of blood, and then they they switch to her plucking the eyes out. Oh, I just thought that was great. Then they get to the second one, and just the way she described it, I really thought for a moment that it was going to be the dicks of her slaves. I thought she chopped them off and put them in there, but honestly, intestines a little more gruesome. And I just love that they're showing, they're showing the scenes. They're not like cutting away and making you think. They're actually showing them to you, which I think is awesome. Then the daughters get all pissed and they go up to their room and start talking about killing their mother. But uh, Mama Kathy Bates hears this and locks her daughters away for a year. Breaks one of their legs and threatens to shove shit in the oldest daughter's mouth. So we see she's not just an evil bitch to her slaves, she's an evil bitch to her daughters. We move to the hospital scene. The whole hospital scene gave me the feel of asylum. Uh, I think, I thought it was just fantastic. Um, first you have Jessica Lang sitting there popping what I think we could assume is Xanax, Valium, some type of benzo. Uh, flipping out on the doctor, and for the first time, I think, showing some concern for her daughter. Starts walking around the, I'm calling it the asylum, because that definitely didn't look like a hospital. It definitely looked more like an asylum. All fucked up off the of meds, and the crazy guy wearing a diaper just walks up to her, grabs her, says, you didn't throw the acid, but you might as well have. Just straight out of asylum. I thought that was... Just fantastic. Um, she sees the witch in the cloak, in the black cloak, walking around. I never thought it was Myrtle who had anything to do with throwing the ass in on Cordelia. Never thought it was Myrtle who attacked her. And we find out later that we're right. My opinion is, I think it's somebody from Marie Laveau's tribe... And they did that to make sure to keep both Fiona and Cordelia out of the house so they can they can attack the students and uh, Kathy Bates without the Supreme and the Supreme's daughter around, figuring they would have free reign and they would be able to kill everybody there. That's my opinion on that. And uh, we see Fiona has a heart. Now, whether she did this because she felt guilty, or she did it because she was high as fuck with the meds she stole, she goes into the room with uh, the woman who just had a stillborn baby, and performs the spell and brings the baby to life. So we learn that not only can you restore life, but you can give life. I think that that was it was very important and it was specifically said that's why she asked was the baby still born or born at birth. So not only can she breathe life back into somebody as well as suck the life out of you, but she can create life. But it was to me that was a very touching scene. And I know some people think that, you know, she still has her own agenda that she may have put a curse on the mother. I don't think so. I think that it was done in, in her grief and her inner sorrow about her own daughter. 
I think that's why she did it. Um, Hank shows up. Fucking Hank. And Hank and Fiona start arguing. And Fiona just calling him out on, on his bullshit. And I really wanted to see Fiona kick his ass. But maybe we will soon. Because we see later in the episode, and I'm going to talk about this now because we're in the hospital, so I'm just going to stick to the hospital scene instead of jumping back and forth. Um, Hank talking to uh, Cordelia. He grabs her hand, and she wakes up and sees what he did. Sees her, sees him cheating on her with uh, Kaylee Alexandra Breckenridge, who will be back next episode. Thank you. Um... So, to me, I think that symbolizes her third eye opening. Her physical eyes, she can't use anymore, but I think she's going to come back stronger, more determined, and ready to kick some ass. So, now we go to the fight scene at the school. And my girl Zoe, my girl Zoe, just took charge like a boss, just instructing everybody, you know, what to do, where to go, keeping Kathy Bates from going outside, telling me, are you stupid? Your daughter's a dead. But uh, the funny part about this scene was when she called Spaulding down and, you know, they're trying to get Queenie upstairs and everything, and they're like, you know, Spaulding, take it to your attic, and just the look on his face and him shaking his hands, I, I, I cracked up. I thought that that part was hysterical. But, um... Nan's little boy toy decides to uh, go outside and try and reason with these zombies, not knowing that they're really zombies, and uh, he gets an axe to the back. So Nan goes out, tries to help him, and they're about to be killed, and out comes Zoe, banging pots and pans, uh, saying, come after me, you pieces of shit, come on, come to mama. I thought that, that was just great. Just, Zoe just took charge. She gets chased away. Finds herself a chainsaw. And then Zoe comes out all slicing up zombies. Cutting them in half. Cutting their heads off. Getting all covered in blood. I mean, she just went from the first episode being this timid little girl. To coming out killing zombies with fucking chainsaws. And slicing through them like a warm night through butter. Thought it was great. And then her chainsaw fails. She falls to the floor, and here's the new power. Reaches up and just says, go be in, be in your nature. And not only does she kill the zombie, but she breaks Marie Laveau's spell. Knocks her out of a trance. I stood up and cheered. And then Laveau's response was, was great. I mean, you can sense for the first time her fear. Of the of the witches right there. I don't know what that is, but that witch house sure sure has some power in it now. You can tell that there's there's a little bit of a fear there, and she doesn't know what to make of it. So we move on to the cleanup. Oh, I forgot. I'm sorry. I skipped um I skipped over um Laveau saving Queenie. By, I guess, symbolically killing because her daughter was already dead. But killing her daughter and then quiet, crying on Queenie's shoulder. So, I mean, I guess 180 years in a box underground made her see the error of her ways. Maybe seeing her daughters there like that. I don't know. Something has changed her mindset. For her, not only to save Queenie, but to cry on Queenie's shoulder. And Queenie's showing sympathy. So I, I'm I'm very intrigued to uh, see how that uh, <clears throat> excuse me that relationship develops. There was no part of this episode that I didn't like, and then we go to the cleanup. Fiona allowing Nan's boy toy to stay, Nan being all happy about it, and Fiona acknowledging what Zoe did. I don't think Fiona. I don't think. Uh, Fiona knows of the power that the next Supreme released, because I, I thought Zoe was going to be the Supreme since day one, and being able to overpower Laveau's magic instinctively, 
I think, just shows either she's just going to be extremely powerful or she definitely is the next Supreme. But um, I don't think Fiona knows about the magic she used. I think she just, you know, thinks uh, thinks uh, Zoe cut them all up with a chainsaw, which is equally impressive. I mean, this little girl running around with a chainsaw and cutting the shit out of fucking zombies is great. I would think I watched that scene like 50 times. And the council shows up. And obviously Fiona knew the council was coming because we got um, Queenie helping her uh, frame Myrtle. And the council wants to convict Fiona of, I guess, overall gross neglect and take over and have the council take over the supremacy. And that right there was Myrtle's downfall. I said it last week, I'm going to say it again, she's jealous of Fiona, jealous that Fiona is the supreme, feels that she should be, and instead of inheriting it, she wanted to take it. Yeah, well, don't fuck with the supreme, bitches, because Fiona turned that shit right around, uh, also with, with help from Queenie and Spaulding. Obviously, Spaulding was, um, again, doing Fiona's bidding by following around Myrtle while she was in uh, New Orleans. Um, showing her where her hotel was, able to take the picture, able to plant the evidence. I, I mean, she obviously didn't know that she was going to kill, Mur uh, kill Madison at the time, but definitely able to uh, now frame Myrtle for it. Myrtle then goes and decides, I'm going to martyr myself. I'm not going to fight. You know, there, there's evidence. I love the, the timing. Fiona grabs Myrtle's hand. That's when Queenie dips her own hand in uh, sulfuric acid. I, excellent, greatly done scene, and I love the interaction, the back and forth between Fiona and Myrtle. I think it's just awesome. The best part about the scene, though, is Fiona going, no, you will listen, and basically knocks Myrtle down on her ass, and, and Quentin's like, oh... <laughs> which was my reaction just just the power that emanated from Fiona right there was was great so now Myrtle decides she wants to martyr herself she would rather burn at the stake than boil in Fiona's pot um, we go to the we go to the burning she's all dressed in white with a hair all poofed out like a fro strapped up onto onto uh, onto the stake and um, that creepy bodyguard, the albino guy, he just freaks me out. Doesn't say nothing, just walks around like, yep, I'm the shit and I know it. Dumping fucking gasoline all over her, drenching her in gasoline, and then flip the cigarette and torch the bitch. And, you know, Queenie's response was, was perfect. You don't mess with the Supreme. When, uh, so he was like, is this, is this real? Are we really doing this? And... Queenie having uh, some remorse, you know, obviously she didn't know the full part of the plan, she didn't know that Myrtle was going to be convicted and burned, and Fiona just uh, played, played, her like, played her like a cheap guitar, you can be the next Supreme, I feel you growing stronger, follow my tutelage, listen to me, blah blah blah, just totally, totally playing her. And I, I I thought that 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 was actually that was actually pretty cool too. Um, let's see what else do we have? We have oh, and of course we knew at the end of the episode. Here comes Misty strolling up, and she revives revives Myrtle. And I know I've I've said it in a couple of comments already, but. All I could, and I knew it was, I knew it was going to happen as soon as I saw Misty walking, and you can see Myrtle in the distance being all burned, and all of a sudden I just hear the Imperial March playing in my head as she leans down and, and grabs Myrtle's face, and she's all burnt, looking like Anakin before he gets the, the Darth Vader suit on. I just hear the Imperial March in my head as her eyes open up. Um, so that leaves us to wonder, one, how Misty knew. If uh, she has some type of connection to the dead, and if she does, how come she doesn't know about Madison yet? Or was this all a setup? Did Myrtle agree 
did, did Myrtle go to the stake with, without protest because she had already planned it with Misty to bring her back? So these are some interesting questions. Um, I don't think it's coincidence that Misty just stumbled stumbled across her. So maybe Misty has found an ally with with um, Myrtle, and Myrtle's going to need one now that she's excommunicated from the council and convicted of attacking a witch. Which actually I have the episode on in the background background right now, and it's on the witch burning seed. Absolutely love it. Um. Questions that didn't get answered in this episode. No Kyle. Where's Kyle? Um, I think he finds his way to Misty. He finds, he finds, he, he goes where he knows. He goes the most recent places he can remember. So I think he finds his way to Misty. Um, really starting to feel bad for Madison right now. Um, now that she is dead and now armless. And she's been stuck up in um, the uh, 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 in Spalding's little room uh, in her tea party of horror. But um, the preview for next week um, shows Misty, Zoe, Kyle with uh, a dead Madison on a table. So I think we can see Madison being brought brought back next week. Um, there was Kyle in the previews for next week, so everybody who's been missing Kyle the last few episodes, he will be back next episode. Uh, yay! Um, but yeah, every, every aspect of, of this episode I thought was excellent. It flowed, it felt like the episode was maybe ten minutes long instead of an hour. Um... Like I said, Alexandra Breckenridge is going to be back next week. Um, I saw a still of her sitting at the table with Cordelia, but Cordelia didn't look like she was burned. Cordelia just looked like, you know, she had her glasses on, so that might be a flashback. Um, don't know. But i um, curious to know what Hank's motives are behind everything that he's doing. Um, next week we'll see the Axeman. And... I hope we learn more about this new power as always. Um, the next week is the midway point. It's 6 of 13. So we're at the midway point of the season. Um, I think Marie Laveau is going to do a little more research before she attacks again. And yeah, there's a, um, a, lot, a, lot, of, a lot of things to be curious about for next week. Where's Myrtle going to go? Um, what's going to happen with Hank? Uh, how well Cordelia recovers, um, Misty's powers and how they develop. So we'll just wait and see. Um, thanks for listening, and um, I'll see you all next week. Please.